The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Pastor Mike, good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line today. Open line through till one. Text one double six one double seven. Same WhatsApp number one double six one double seven. But you'll need to stick oh seven six two four in front of that. Get us in your contacts. Email studio at manxradio.com. Call sixty six thirteen sixty eight. Have you paid your tax yet? By the way, that was a bit of a surprise, eh? All this about being a low tax jurisdiction. What do you think? Is this going to attract people from across? If we if we are supposed to be a low tax jurisdiction, wouldn't it nice to be a low tax jurisdiction? Uh, do you think it's a little over a week until politicians reconvene in Timwald as the recess comes to an end? Uh, lots of things that they're going to be talking about, many of things they have been talking about, and also certain things they should be talking about, but obviously aren't. So, have you got any thoughts? <laughs> And then by all means, getting thanks to Alex, by the way, uh, hanging on in there. Interestingly, raised yesterday the story about the uh, RNLI, the Lifeboat Institution. They say RNLI say they're committed to finding a long-term solution to ensure uh, to ensure the sustainability of Douglas RNLI, despite it being a challenge. Well, there's some uh, there's some corporate speak for you. They're committed to finding a long-term solution to ensure the sustainability of Douglas RNLI despite it being a challenge. Wouldn't it be easy just to say, we'll sort it out? I mean, they are the RNLI. They deal in emergencies. That's the whole thing, the reason they're there for. They're em- Can you imagine if they went out to a, a, a ship in distress, a yacht in distress, saying, we're committed to finding a long-term solution to you sinking despite it being a challenge for you. Imagine that. Anyway, this follows concerns about the conditions that volunteer crew are currently working under uh, after a delay in finding a new lifeboat house. Now, as always, the people on the ground volunteer, volunteer, capital V, volunteer crew working under uh, after a delay in finding a new lifeboat house. What on earth is going on that we can't actually sort out the RNLI? We can't sort out that ramshackle place that they have, well, can't even use at the moment. The regional communications manager from the Wales, Northwest, and Isle of Man told Max Radio finding a long term solution to ensure the sustainability of the Douglas RNLI into the future has presented us with some challenges. Well, finding a long term solution into the past is not really on, is it? Everything's the future. We realise this has been a difficult time and thank all at Douglas RNLI for their patience. I should say you should thank them for their patience. You just wonder whether this Herbert at the uh, Wales Northwestern Isle of Man Regional Communications Manager actually understands Sir William Hillary's buried in St George's. The RNLI started here. I'm looking out of my window. I can see a statue of him. They're committed to finding a long-term solution. Well, bully for them, and let's hope it gets sorted out soon. David's first with us today. Hi, David. Hi, Randy. The same subject, really. I was amazed to listen to that uh, interview, and the suggestion is that the Yacht Club, uh, um, you know, own the place where next to the um, the lifeboat station is in the sea. I thought the government of the Isle of Man owned all the harbours. Maybe I'm standard to be correction, corrected, but maybe the Yacht Club, maybe some donkeys years ago signed a, an agreement with government, but I don't remember it when I was in there. There was always an intention to build a new lifeboat station to make it more modern. And we've got this funding, uh, and I quite agree with the person who's funding that uh, millions of pounds. He wants it to go to the Douglas one. Um, what's the problem here, Andy? I can't understand why it's not on a list to say we do this, we do that and the other and let's get on with it. They've got the money. It's the lifeboat, David. 
It's the flipping lifeboat. Do you know what I mean? I can't understand when the, why Pete, anybody would faff around with the lifeboat. It's an emergency service. Well, I just wonder where, they, where are the priorities? You know, I, I know that they're, they're, they're struggling all over the place, but at the end of the day, you must have in your department uh, priorities X, Y, and Z. Tackle them. Oh, we need to do this. Where, where, what does the lifeboat do? all the time rescue people yes. rescue yachts it's, they don't are. do pleasure cruises <laughs> that's what I can't understand and uh, I listened to the interview where they've got to be bussed if it's true from the sea terminal yeah or that's right else. yeah they've got to be bussed from the sea terminal and every minute counts it's like any service that's the uh, fire police ambulance or whatever the coast guard minutes count don't they uh, I, I don't know, Andy, uh, but uh, I'd just like to find out where somebody will come on and say to us who maybe have more knowledge of the sea and say, well, the yacht club don't own it. They may they rented a place up near the tongue somewhere, uh, the, the buildings there. Where they're yeah, near they the do, car. yeah. But as far as I know, that's just a business. It's, they don't own the sea. So we need to push on something. And this is what Man in Line does, doesn't mm, it? Okay. Cheers, right. mate. Good to hear from you. Thanks for that. And Peter, is, uh, I think we got Peter going to be with us. Uh, we'll find out in just a moment. Anyway, the story about the uh, lifeboats goes on and on and on. So if you want to uh, get in touch, by all means do. Uh, Howard's with us now. Hi, Howard. Oh, hello, Andy. Straight through to the button. Yes. Uh, no, just listening to the um, one about the lifeboats. This, well, people living on the island will know this is not a new thing. It's been going, I would say, at least 15 years because they were talking about um, moving into the corner of the, what we term locally as the croak, where the, um, in the summer you get half a dozen yachts tied up. Uh, and that, in my lifetime, has always been an area there where the local um Local yachts would tie up. I'm yeah. not saying that they have any uh, hold on it. But as this is a harbour area, the lifeboats are a vital uh, piece of equipment. What is going through the mind of the RNLI? We have, within a short distance, Ramsey. An equal short distance, Port St. Mary. Both were two high-speed lifeboats. Uh, and um, Ramsey has one of the new Shannons. Now, there's supposed to be a Shannon coming to Douglas, eventually. Uh, but what's to say that the lifeboat might not be mulling over in their minds, we don't know how they work these days, of putting the Douglas um, Shannon lifeboat down to Port St. Mary and say we can now dispense with the Douglas one because we've got two high-speed crafts within a very few short miles of each other. So, you know, it may be such that now that the 200 years anniversary is here, they might be mulling it over until such times that that particular time is over yeah. and then have their sudden brain light bulb moment, we can do away with Douglas altogether. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. As you say, the, the, it's a uh, it's a Mersey class. I mean, Shannon took over from Mersey, didn't it? So, it did, yeah. how old is the one in Douglas now? I don't know, but she's she's perfectly satisfactory as a, you know as a lifeboat as such. But she's not what was intended. It was intended for three. And I was at a um, a meeting when the head of the lifeboats was given this speech, and he said there are three due on the Isle of Man, and that was quite a number of years ago. Okay, there's one appeal now. There's one in Ramsey, and the third was going to be here. And what I'm led to believe, I'll stand corrected on this, it was supposed to be named Sir William. Uh, and you say rightly that he is buried in St. George's Church. He lived on Douglas Head. He established the RNLI here. What is more important than that? I just, I, it just baffles me. I mean, this started in, I think it was 2013, uh, it was originally. Before that. Uh, I mean, um, certainly it, in 2013, they were talking yeah. about what to, do, to actually do. Uh, mm -hmm. In 2016, I think there was a plan to convert the boathouse into a two-story crew and lifeboat house as yeah. well. Uh, that went by the wayside. It's nearly 2025, Howard. It is, and they're still pondering, and I know the lad that's done the work down in that um, existing um, lifeboat shell, um, you know, 
launch place um, where they keep the lifeboat, although yeah. I don't think they launch from it now. Um, she's tied up against the <clears throat> the one they use for the bringing the people ashore from the cruise ships. So she's in a float boat. But this is the beauty about the <clears throat> the Shannon class. She is both on a float boat or um, a launch boat. She'll right. do both. Uh, whereas some of them are restricted. And <clears throat> to get, you know, the, the, the hemming and harding and huffing and puffing and getting nowhere because this was talked about long before um, the Manxman come on the scene, long before it was designed. Uh, they were talking about having to alter the croak, as we call it, to deepen it a bit, um, to allow for easier turning of the ships, and that was the Ben McCree. So somewhere within the DOI, someone's dragging their feet, and this is uh, conducive to what the uh, RNLI are thinking. Well, if they're going to drag their feet, we'll hang on till we don't. You know, we find we're not needed. It's but you hope, Howard. Emergency. You hope this isn't this isn't over money, surely. I wouldn't think so because um, what I'm led to believe they've already had the uh, the money put forward yeah. uh, by a sponsor uh, for a lot of the work, a serious amount of um, building and the lifeboat itself, I believe. So. It's not money in that sense, unless the RNLI are dragging their feet, and uh, because they are, um, well, they're scratching. They they're using money up like it's going out of fashion, yeah. and uh, you know they're scratching. You see adverts every night, virtually on the on the television. Uh, get your name on the side of a boat, and all of a sudden, you know, they'll leave your money in the will. But what the government here, and they want to get that act together. Rapidly, because 2026 is the election year, and that's a whole new ball game. Then you're going to be six to eight months before they even think about that. So now's the time. Get up off that backside, go out in the rain, and see what it's like. And you know what was that old saying? Smell the coffee yeah. instead of, instead of sitting in a coffee shop and just sitting there talking about garbage. Get out and do something. Okay. And this is where the lifeboat. Although it did start, I think the first one was over on Clarence Terrace, over where they just built that sea wall now. Um, and then they moved it around, and it was actually um, at the bottom by the little um, little pier, and then they moved it over to where it's, uh, the existing one is now. But that's in serious problems because it's, it's old, it's getting decrepit, and it's in need of serious replacement. And those lads go out... And I take my hat off them. I would not go anywhere near a lifeboat. Uh, 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 let me tell away. you. Let me tell you. I stand as an abject coward in awe of those boys who turn yeah. up. Well, uh, I know a so lot of them personally. Exactly. And I know. I, know uh, I just worked on them. I mean, it um, is. Uh, it takes a very special type of person, and it's it's in the Isle of Man's DNA. The lifeboats are part of the Isle of Man, and let's hope this is not another bit of the Isle of Man that's just going to crumble away if Douglas gets downgraded because Ramsey and Port St Mary can cope. Yeah, well, that's what, uh, what was, I was thinking of, and uh, they could move what is supposed to be the Shannon coming to Douglas, move it to Port St Mary, and... Um, you know, that would give them um, a bigger boat to transfer to somewhere else yeah. and okay. save them money. All right. So would... it's, it's a sad state of affairs, but let's get this government, let them get off their backside and get something done because okay. they're going to get glued to the seats if they don't move. Thanks, Howard. Take care. Bye Good now. to hear from you. It's a bit of a pickle, to say the least. Peter said uh, the Douglas lifeboat's got an issue where they can't winch the boat back into the lifeboat house, hence it is berthed by the sea terminal. The problem, says Peter, it lies in heavy management in the UK, where apparently they don't speak to each other. Where, uh, well, obviously, once upon a time, it was just a charity, wasn't it? It was a charity that funded lifeboats. Obviously, now they've got some corporate structure to it. Hmm... Uh, charities are like governments. The administrators choose where to squander the money, says Des. All right, point taken. But William Hillary is buried here. He's revered here. It started here. Shh, what on earth is going on? Here's Peter with us now. Hello, Peter. Oh, hello, Andy. It's Peter Murkoff here. Yeah. I just want to um, just pursue 
points that I've raised before. With regard to the Safe Access Zones and Protected Public Places Bill, yeah. and how this can interact with the Assisted Dying Bill and uh, lead to some very curious consequences. As you know, I've already pointed out, and uh, I'll say it again, that you've got the Department of Health operating uh, um, potentially on two conflicting pur purposes, i.e. to provide, um, make provision for assisted suicide and to have a strategy which is seeking to prevent assisted suicide. And both of those are spending public money. If the bill gets through, of course, the um, department will be involved in the assistance of uh, suicide under certain circumstances, despite the fact that a smokescreen has been thrown around that where some people just will not admit what um, the bill of the assisted dying bill is about. But you've got both these bills going through the uh, legislature at the moment. Now, you've got the safe access zones. And I pointed out before, and I'll remind everyone again, there's a lot of offences cr created by that. But the one that ought to worry people the most are to be found in Section 10 and in Section 10, Subsection 3 and 4. It's an offence for the defendant persistently, continuously or repeatedly to occupy any part of a safe access zone. Now, the, the bill is very unclear as to whether the so-called safe access zone will cover private land. It just talks about an, a designated area, and they talk about an area um, within a radius of 100 metres from any part of protected premises or delineated by street or route names and so on. So in the absence of it, the process uh, of uh, clarification, it could include private land. Now, you've got this offence then of D, the defendant who's come before the courts. <laughs> he might actually, if he has, we'll say, given some information out in one of these uh, safe access zones and done it very peacefully. And I've got, I hold no brief for people being aggressive, um, obstructive or so on, but someone who simply hands out information or makes ha information accessible. Now that will fall foul of the bill because it is a criminal, it will become a criminal offence to influence someone. Now, unless we're living in a totalitarian society and what you're engaged in doing um, in Manx Radio is surely you want to have some influence. You don't broadcast for nothing. And newspapers seek to influence people. And since when has it been a criminal offence in a democratic society to want to influence people? But evidently under the bill it is. And the way you do it is you can either do it intentionally or recklessly, directly or indirectly. So you can recklessly, indirectly influence someone, which is a minefield in itself. Now, you've got these notices that are going up. Um, I've seen them in certain public places to which the public has access, and quite properly from the suicide prevention strategy, seeking to influence people uh, not to um, commit suicide, which is a very laudable aim and a proper expenditure of public money. But I can foresee that that could become a crime if, for example, the places where the assisted suicide is going to be medically given, if those become protected places, then it would become an offence to influence people. And so you've got the absurdity here that if both of these bills get through as they stand, you've got the Department of Health on the one side uh, being able to provide for assisted suicide. You've got the Department of Health on the other side having a very laudable strategy to prevent assisted suicide. But that strategy, theoretically and legally, could actually conflict if that strategy is exercised within a uh, within a one of these safe access zones and incidentally there's no limit to how far these safe access zones can go they talk about 100 yards or streets but there is a power to extend the zone and there is no limit given so quite frankly you could in effect 
uh, shut the whole island down. And so leave aside all the other things. And uh, man in line is a thing that you can only just make a small point on. You've already got a perfect clarification of the absurdity that I've said we're in with the assisted dying bill and the suicide prevention strategy. And this is going to come up again with these safe access zones. So I just put it to the public. That is the sort of legislation that we've got going through the pipeline. Now is the time to do something about it because uh, once it's passed into law, it'll be very difficult to change. What is it that you think uh, the proponents then of the Safe Access Zones and Protective Public Spaces Mm -hmm. Bill 2024, uh, what do you think they think they're doing? Well, the... uh, I've read the uh, um, what was said by the mover of the bill, and I don't wish to get into, involved in personalities, but I did read what was said um, at the time when leave was sought to introduce the bill. They, there wasn't actually anything specifically specified. The close it came, and I'm speaking from memory, was they, uh, it was said to the Keys, I am sure you all know or are aware of what has happened. Well, I wasn't aware. I wasn't a bit, well, I'm not in the Keys, but I wasn't aware, and I don't know whether all the Keys were aware. And what was not shown, which should have been shown, and this is another strange thing about this bill, that if there are problems of people accessing services, then why is it that the existing law of harassment and the Public Order Act were not used because strangely, and this is another weird thing about this bill, it actually reenacts harassment and the Public Order Act in the bill. But if those those uh, provisions have been tried and found wanting, and there's no evidence whether they were or weren't, why are they being reenacted? Because obviously, it was not really shown, put it bluntly, that the existing criminal law was not able to meet a need of which I'm not completely clear what the need was, but I can't understand how uh, the uh, law on prevention of harassment or of threatening or abusive behaviour or insulting behaviour, which we have in, in that law, why that wasn't used or where it fell foul, I don't know. But I do think that we do need a very, very close scrutiny of what's going on, because I come back to what I'm talking about. We're moving into a totalitarian society, uh, blindfold if we're not careful, if it's going to become an offence to seek to influence people and note that if uh, a person is convicted of that offence, then it's an offence persistently or continuously to occupy any part of the safe access zone. So does the person have to move house? Interesting point. OK, well, Peter. It, it, it's, it's, a badly, it's, it's a very badly conceived piece of legislation. I'm going to do all I can to make it known all the very serious defects in this bill because, quite frankly, I hope it is never passed without a full-blown public discussion of what the problem is and why the existing law is not able to contain it. OK, I appreciate Thank it, you. Peter. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Half past 12 on Manx Radio. If you want to uh, get more information, by the way, uh, there's a, a government website actually called Legislation, legislation.gov.im. It's a whole site which basically tells you everything that's happening. The recent acts of Timwell that have gone through, recent updates, statutory documents, but also recently introduced bills into Timwell, and this is one of them, the Safe Access Zones and Protected Public Spaces Bill 2024. Uh, Take a look at that, and you've heard what Peter has to say. I just wonder what your thoughts are on this. Uh, A question for Matt Lyde, says Roy B. Why do MHKs get or need a summer recess? The island needs people to work for the people not have extended luxury holidays that we don't have ourselves. I don't think they all take luxury holidays and um, I think what gets the recess is the actual meeting of Tim Walden Keys. Uh, Lots of the MHKs do carry on working through the summer, I think, and they do take their holidays, but they're entitled to them. But we get the point, and certainly lots of the ministers work here, there and everywhere. But Roy B, thanks for that. Raging Roy B, he calls himself on 505. 
the small amount of money that Mangska is trying to save on surgery reminds me of what the UK government is doing to pensioners there, says Ellen. What's happening in the UK? Did I just hear that the Yellow Welly Brigade own part of Douglas Harbour, says Fran Francis Francesca 62. Uh, note in also, the other day a lady told Alex there was a problem finding a new site for the new station, not the money that's been left in a bequest, says Gaz. Yeah, point taken, but A, where's that money now? Presumably that money is earning interest. I mean, it won't be just in a current account. Surely that will be in a deposit account. That's the point. It's just a bit, uh, Doesn't it strike you as incongruous that the lifeboat is an emergency service? It, that's what it's there for, emergencies. And getting it sorted, sorted out seems like nothing like an emergency. Weird, especially as the money's there, and it started here. Uh, more people telling me about the issue with the Douglas lifeboat, the fact they can't winch the boat back to the life. It does look a bit rickety, the uh, the lifeboat house, doesn't it? Uh, look, Andy, the DOI, says Martin, couldn't even put two steel rails down the prom. I doubt they can build a lifeboat house on 927. Uh, when my wife and daughter arrived there and asked for a luggage trolley, they were told they don't have any there. Does anybody know the difference at Liverpool Terminal, this is? Do they have luggage trolleys at Liverpool Terminal? Here's a message in that just says, um, the problem with the RNLI is the UK. Millions of people stopped giving money to them as they were being used to bring illegal immigrants to the UK uh, from their floating rafts. People had enough of it. That's why, says Graham, there was an issue, wasn't there? Certainly in PR terms, where lots of people voiced concern that the RNLI were being dragooned, I think, by the UK government into helping them to uh, get that. Well, well, that may or may not the case, but certainly uh, we don't know what the RNLI's financial position is. But certainly, if the money's been pledged for a new lifeboat house in Douglas, where on heck is it? This is Zoe Gillings Briar, Manx Olympic snowboard athlete. I wanted to wish Manx Radio a very happy 60th birthday. Hey, thank you, Pammy. She said, I've never been so bored as when certain callers go on and ruin the programme. Thank you, Pammy. 505, I look forward to hearing your call. Your plans for tomorrow can start today with an HSBC loan. Whether you're looking to start renovating, planning a tropical escape, or getting a new electric car. I said electric... With an instant credit decision and quick access to funds, you can fast-track your plans with an HSBC loan. To find out more, visit our website or pop into branch and our friendly team will be happy to help. HSBC, opening up a world of opportunity. HSBC Bank PLC Isle of Man branch is regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Visit the HSBC website for terms and eligibility requirements. Island Hearing Limited, your local hearing care specialist since 2009 with branches in Port Erin and Ramsey. We provide the very latest hearing aid technology available, which you can try at home, with excellent aftercare and a wax removal service available using micro suction. Give us a ring on 830 722 or visit Island Hearing at One Station Road, Port Erin. We're happy to help. Island Hearing, always listening. Um, sorry to mention it, but the countdown to Christmas has officially begun. Order Manx Telecom First Class Fibre by November 1st for guaranteed installation before the festive fun begins. Streaming, video chats with family, online shopping and much more to help you connect to Christmas like never before. Don't leave it too late. Book today. Visit mt.im slash order fibre for availability terms and conditions. Book call 624 624 now. It's the perfect time to plant spring bulbs and winter pansies and there's a wide range available at Ramsey Garden Centre, plus a full range of garden essentials for indoor and out, including battery lights. Visit Ramsey Garden Centre, open seven days a week. It's the topic everyone's been talking about. I mean, what on earth is going on at Manx Care? On Island Life this week, we're going to take a closer look at that decision to cut elective surgery lists. We'll be hearing the reaction from politicians. Again, it's the people of the Isle of Man that are going to be impacted by this. More from the doctors speaking out against the move. We are our patient's advocate. And the chief executive of Manx Care to find out the reasoning behind it. We've absolutely looked everywhere else before we've reached this point. That's 
Desert Island Life Thursday night at 5.30 here on Manx Radio with a podcast available after broadcast. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Charlie's on now. Hi, Charlie. Hi. If you send the Man in Line to two hours and we get rid of all the ads and get an hour to talk. How about that? <laughs> right. Um, they're finding trouble finding a place for the lifeboat house. Well, there's a brownfield site a hundred yards away from uh, the lifeboat now. Whereabouts oh. is that? Port Skillion, the old uh, swimming pool. Direct sea access. Yeah, I wonder right. who owns that. Is that is that government? It must be government owned, mustn't it? It is. All beaches are government owned. The Queen owns the beaches to the high tide mark. Wow. But, um, I mean, it's not exactly good access, though, is it? Why? Well, it's, it's all it's, it's all corners. It's all twisty, turny around there, isn't it? Where would you, you'd have to put a road in, wouldn't you? The road's already in there to a car park above. Yeah, that's yeah by the uh, by the Coast Guard place there. But I mean, well, the, yeah. yeah. Well, if they're going to put the light boat to house below, they'd have a, a lift going straight down to it. Well, it's used for nothing else at the moment, is it? No. Well, the dogs are using it, that's better. Port Skillion. Well, Charlie, yeah. Well, even the back of the uh, breakwater, where they put the stabbards in, the, that gas tank only takes up part of it. Couldn't they put a sh- um, an access out there? I wonder whether they thought of that. Well... You could tear some newspaper up and put a nail and the, half the damage case wouldn't even think about using that. <laughs> All right. OK. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> Good to <laughs> Thanks, that. Bye. It's uh, 22 minutes before one. The UK is now going big into carbon capture. When will the Isle of Man jump on the bandwagon? How are the trees doing capturing carbon dioxide in Santon, says Gaz. Uh, let's have a look here. Um... Uh, Peter thinks we still live in a democracy. He's right about it turning into a totalitarian dictatorship. Communism has been brought in before our eyes and barely anybody has noticed, says Bob on 488. This is this. I just wonder what you think of this protected spaces thing. Safe access zones and protected public places, Bill. Um, And they're the ones that can decide what they are which is the public space and the protected space that needs protecting. I was reading that, again, the RNLI is struggling to raise funds as people regard them as a taxi service for those illegal migrants. Lots of pubs on the south coast in England won't put the collection box on the bar and won't serve the crew. Is that right? Surely not. I mean, the the RNLI's reputation goes back many, many years before what's happening down there. And who knows? I mean, we don't know whether it was the UK government who mandated that or presumably the RNLI will be getting paid for it. Hmm. So Port Skillion, do you think, then, for where we need to put the... Uh, the new uh, lifeboat. Uh, thanks also. Oh, there's uh, Christine who dropped me a note in regarding suicide prevention. And she said... Um, suicide prevention is very serious. Obviously, it's uh, it's basically where you aim to reduce the risk of suicide, which is often preventable. And uh, the efforts to prevent it may occur, well, at many levels, society level, community, relationship, individual, family. Uh, obviously, suicide is a very serious public health problem. We've talked about it many times on the Isle of Man. We've chatted to people who class themselves as suicidal. It's a big problem in modern day society. It is a big problem for young men. Young men are particularly at risk of having suicidal thoughts. Prevention, protective strategies for for them are, and there is a suicide prevention strategy at government level. So while we, you know, we talk sometimes in colloquial terms about the assisted dying bill, suicide prevention is extremely important. So 
and perhaps you yourself have had experience of this. Perhaps you've known somebody, know somebody indeed, friend, family member, who's talked about it. It is deadly seriously, deadly serious as an issue. Could be anything, really. It can be substance abuse, can be depression, a feeling of not having a, a grasp on your own life, anxiety, agitation, feeling hopeless, not part of things. It's around, and we have to take it seriously. So, um, well, certainly... I have to say, at the risk of getting myself into hot water, I will always, always advocate for, to uh, prevent suicide and to put people in a, a much better place than thinking about taking their own lives. At the side of that, you have a sister dying. So where you draw the line between the government's assisted dying legislation and suicide prevention really, I think, will define what you think about it. The line is yours to draw. This is the Isle of Man talking. The man in line. Meet Jane. When Dad began forgetting the little things, we knew we needed help. Mam Benham walked us through every step. Real stories, real solutions. Secure tomorrow today. With Man Benham. Chain, there's no chain. The chain's jumped off the sprocket. This Saturday is the final event of the Andreas Racing Association's calendar, the four-hour endurance race. Under-16s get in free. Adults are £6. We have full facilities. Come and see some endurance action. I began to struggle with the stairs, but I didn't want to leave our family home. So my daughter told me about Acorn stair lifts and their new showroom in Douglas. I was able to try the stair lifts and find the right one for me and the home I love. They were so friendly. The whole process was hassle-free and they offered the whole package from installation to servicing. Choose the island's first choice for stair lifts. Acorn Stair Lift, South Quay, Douglas. Call Acorn Stair Lifts now on 672 414 or call into our Douglas showroom. The Musicals in Concert returns to the Royal Hall Villa Marina Sunday 13th of October presented by Stage Ed featuring classic songs from the world's greatest musicals in a gala performance by stars from the London stage. The musicals in concert, Sunday 13th October at the Villa Marina. Book now at villagaiety.com or on 600 555 with Zedra, Isle of Man and supported by your nation station, Manx Radio. Coming up, we have another winning weekend here on Manx Radio and this time we're giving you the chance to win £200 to put towards your next car service at Keyside Tyre and Service Centre. The team there will get your car winter ready with a comprehensive service book in today and drive with confidence right through the winter months to win all you have to do is listen out for our winning question which we'll ask on air right across the weekend and once you've heard it text your answer to 166 make this your winning weekend with Keyside Tire and Service Centre and your nation station Manx Radio the Man in Line with Andy Witt. Hey, Faster Mike, good afternoon. Thanks for dropping by. Yes, this, um, there's a big thing going on tomorrow aimed at strengthening the Isle of Man's protection from the impacts of financial crime. It's on at the Villa Marina tomorrow, the Countering Financial Crime Conference 2024, organised by the FSA. They're talking about countering, fin- countering financial crime, Andy, yes. Speakers from on and off the island are going to share professional insight and highlight best practice dealing with money laundering terrorist financing and other financial crime. Uh, One of the senior managers at the supervision division at the FSA is David Baker. first part of the event is going to be based around our public-private partnership with um, what's known as the Isle of Man Financial Crime Partnership taking a real lead on that. We're hoping to have uh, other international agencies who do this really well to come in and show us how it's done and for us to learn from them and for industry to learn how, how they can do their part. 
Well, we'll find out what happens with that tomorrow. Uh, John dropped a note in just to say, your callers raised the question of the spotlight being turned on the Isle of Man from non-European countries. Uh, there was a programme on Radio 4 about that. Well, thank you, John. Send me a link. I'll take a listen to it. Regarding the zero, zero suicide prevention strategy, it's an awful idea, says Bob, and I'm surprised it ever passed. It'll be similar to the targets across where they try to get people seen at emergency departments within four hours. It's unobtainable. It just continues the stigma around suicide. Instead of educating the survivors of the families and comfort them, it further shames the people who are suicidal, suicidal themselves by telling them that they're going to uh, mess with government statistics. Shameful, says Bob on 378. Um, if somebody wants to die in agony, that's their decision and they're welcome to it. But don't speak for me, says Don. Uh, people should visit the hospital and hospice before opening their mouth. Peter was talking about, and he's always talked about, um, the assisted dying bill, basically uh, being an assisted suicide bill. That's uh, what he what he talks about. Um, again, different people have different um views on this uh, regarding Ma Manx Care says Desmond how about looking at the wages they are paid to save money or is it the patients that have to suffer says Des well we don't actually know do we we don't actually know how much senior management at Manx Care get paid presumably and I'm surmising they get the going rate we decided we were going to create Manx Care. We had a report. We paid for the report. We instigated what the report did. We separated DHSC and brought Manx Care in. And paid. it was supposed to deliver savings. Hasn't yet. But it may do in the future. But I just wonder, uh, where do we go, Des, from there? Is that what do I mean, are you suggesting we claw people's wages back? It doesn't work that way. I mean, it might be nice to think it does, but it just doesn't because people sign contracts and we in the Western world live under the law of contract. I believe the problem with a lifeboat is the winch is out of action and needs replacing, says JT. Thank you, John. And also, um, are the government going to tell us what to do with our money? Says, well, they do anyway. It's called taxation. Uh, Stephen's with us now. Hello, Stephen. Uh, hi, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about the lifeboat, please. OK, off you go. Uh, there's an awful lot of nonsense being talked there. I mean, the chap who says use Port Skillion. Can you imagine the crew going to ha having to go down all those steps and then, get, uh, and then getting a lifeboat at the bottom? Absolute nonsense. So I believe that the trouble is that, um, that although the money's provided f for that boat, they couldn't make up the mind where they were going to put it. Uh, I understand that they, um, when the new boat w was uh, being uh, talked about, they reckoned the length of it uh, they w they would interfere with the boat if it was in its present position. And the proposal was, the, ma the most likely one was to put it next, uh, a very similar one to the, the cruise boat uh, terminal uh, between, uh, you know where it is, it comes down right uh, next to the Victoria Pier. Yeah. The, uh, the alternative was to put it on the north side of the Edward Pier. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, the best man, if you want to talk about it, is is, is Peter Cade from uh, uh, KC Foods. He's the chairman, and he's very up to date on that sort of thing. I think, but Stephen, everybody's uh, everybody's just concerned about why has this taken so long? What's going on? Well, it was because they couldn't make up the mind where they were where they're going to put it. The, the harbour board, uh, uh, as I say, uh, stymied it uh, for, from the from the present position until he'd um, found a better alternative. Uh, so the, the latest ones I heard was to have it on the north side of the Edward Pier, or, or, or for some north side of the Fort Anjetty, sorry, yeah. 
or ne- uh, next to the Victoria Bay, next to the uh, a, a very similar one to the cruise line of Earth. And there's, I mean, it would be quick for the crew to get down there. They, there's plenty of parking there. My feeling is that is the best place for it. So who who, who is stopping all this? Is it is it the RNLI or is it the government or who is it? Well, it's it's mainly the government. Uh, uh, the, the, you know they they won't they won't make up their mind which one we're going to be allowed to have. Uh, that's my understanding of it. Now, I mean it's it's a long time since I was in the crew, but uh, yeah, this thing comes comes back to me, and the, 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 the nonsense about uh, 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 getting a, a Shannon here uh, and then. Uh, doing away with uh, getting uh, a smaller boat for Port St. Mary. Port St. Mary boat is already a bigger boat than the, than the Sharon. And no, although it's getting a bit of age on it, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, they, they, you get some people who've got some bloody wild ideas on this programme. So the best man to talk to is Peter Kane. All right. Uh, thanks for that, Stephen. We appreciate it. A good, good insight to it. Thanks for that. Right, right, Eight minutes now before one. We shouldn't obscure the issue of terminally ill people who wish to be put out of their misery with suicide. This is Ian, 817. Suicidal people need to be identified and all possible help awarded to them to avoid taking their own life. But equally, says Ian, terminally ill people with no hope of being cured and who wish to be put out of their misery should have the right to do so, in my opinion. Thanks, Ian. It's uh, safe to say it's not simple, is it? It could be uh, enacted in the UK before it comes um, here, really. They're talking about getting the assisted dying bill in the UK. If the lifeboat station isn't used at the moment, and it seems it isn't, why not just take it away and build a new one on the original site, says Glenda. There you are with your common sense. Glenda, thank you. I can't see why there's confusion over suicide and assisted dying, says David. They are completely different, says David on 861. Uh, thanks also to... We travelled to, to, for the MGP this year. There were no luggage trolleys at the Liverpool Steam Packet Terminal. We have friends who live in apartments just near the terminal, and there's a local bus that runs every hour to the terminal, whether there's a boat or not, says Ronnie in Cheshire. So, no luggage trolleys. Mind you, how far would you take the darn things? And I think if you go one way, isn't it cobbles? you'd be hard-pressed to get the luggage trolleys over the cobbles. Anyway, if I don't work, I don't get paid, says Des. I presume you're self-employed, Des. Uh, But politicians aren't self-employed, so you're kind of running up against a brick wall where that's concerned. It's It's often a point that people resent how much politicians get paid. Well, that's how we wanted it. That's what happened years and years ago. Being a politician, being an MHK, wasn't paid very much at all. So the only people you got as MHKs were people who either didn't need the money, were retired, or were business people. And some people complained that only rich people could become politicians. So we then decided we'd pay the politicians and then attach them to the civil service spine, and consequently their pay goes up and up. And now some people complain can't have it both ways what do you want do you want to pay politicians properly or do you just want rich people or retired people to be politicians or do you want people to do it free prompting the question why don't you do it the rnli has br- brushed the isle of man aside again it was formed on the isle of man in douglas surely they should be here and managed here says uh, manx rob If you didn't have lifeboats and crews, what would happen in a disaster? There'd be sunk boats everywhere. That's our point. 
The government over the last three years has changed the contract of employment for bus drivers, i.e. no overtime rates, so you can only expect no bus drivers at the weekend, thus impacting people with no vehicles, i.e. a big proportion of society. Working class people in the Isle of Man should be better looking for a new location to live as the current administration has no desire at all to help them. No dentists, huge hospital waiting lists, no affordable housing, need I say more? Thank you, Mr. Cannon. I'm demoralised, says Big John in Ramsey. I was up at Jerby on the Sunday cart track. Brilliant setup they've got there, says Tomo. Good to hear from you, Tomo. Question is, why aren't we using the land there for solar panels? We left Onken, early thick fog and rain, got to Jerby. It was clear, lovely clear, and the sun was coming through. We have lots of space in the north. Why don't we put some solar panels there? Uh, here's, I thought... Uh, I heard it was the Yacht Club that didn't want the lifeboat station rebuilt where it was, says 753. And the winch at Douglas is repairable, but the boathouse needs money spent on it. So is it viable? So it's the boathouse. Douglas Shannon Boat was given up to Girvan eight years ago. Douglas has a cracking crew. I think everybody agrees that. The RNLI is butting heads with the government. The options at Douglas says 040 number one close douglas lifeboat station to give the station to atlantic 85 and atlantic 85 the rnli will not put a 2.6 million pound boat afloat against a wall and regarding the south coast the rnli saves lives regardless if they're portsmouth or in inverness a life saved is a life saved well that's the that's the common sense we're going to end the program with today out of hours, call the answer phone on 682 631. Email man in line at manxradio.com. Oh, thanks to Alex Brindley for looking at uh, after Man in Line for the past couple of days, and thanks to Chris Quirk on the phones. Back tomorrow at high noon, open line. W I N T.